The vessel's been on the bottom 102 years. We have her up. This ship, the USS Cairo, had been sent to sail up the Yazoo River, a tributary of the Mississippi. The Yazoo had been filled by the Confederates with torpedoes. The Confederates in dugouts along the bank had successfully detonated two torpedoes, blowing this huge hole in the side of the ship. Many ships which sunk in the relatively shallow rivers were raised and repaired, but the Cairo was not. She was allowed to remain on the bottom of the Yazoo River throughout the war. She was rediscovered in the 1950s by Ed Bears, future chief historian of the National Park Service, based on local stories about the location of the ship. So you were involved in finding and raising the Cairo. Can you tell us about that? All right. I arrived at Vicksburg in September 1955 as a park historian. Along in the summer of 1956, the superintendent, Jim McConney, called me in and he said, I would like it if you would find out, is the Cairo still in the Yazoo River? So I uh, went through the paper trail. Paper trail showed that the Union had discussed salvaging Cairo, but had rejected it because of activity of Confederate partisans. And the Corps of Engineers had never seen Cairo as a hazard to navigation on the Yazoo River. So it indicated that the vessel had never been removed. Commander Selfridge reported that the vessel hit the, to the torpedoes, the Inferno machines, about a half a mile below Blake's lower plantation. And he drove her aground bows on. So I uh, began to ask some questions, and I uh, found it more or less a challenge. So then I worked a little harder, and then I got, got two other interesting peop interested people, Don Jacks. Now, Don worked on the park as a maintenance man, but he had spent years on the river. He ran trout lines. He cat caught catfish. And he knew the river the Yazoo as a person that spends a lot of time on the river. First off, he said, if something sinks in the Yazoo River, it'll silt in very fast. If you drive a car into the Yazoo River, it fills with silt overnight. And then Warren Grabo, who worked for the Corps of Engineers, uh, interested in the Civil War, uh, he knew the geological history of the Yazoo. He knew the Yazoo at one time was an old channel of the Ohio. And he knew, unlike the Mississippi River, the Yazoo had a very, very stable channel. We decided to go look for it. Also, Jax was very important because he had a 16-foot runabout. Uh, we'd hoped to get a dip needle, which is a fairly sensitive magnetic device, but we were none in Vicksburg. So we went up the river with a World War II compass, military compass, which is fairly sensitive. So we went up the river on the 11th day of November. We could locate where Blake's lower plantation was. So we started there and started drifting down. And we were going down the east side of the river. We figured it was more likely to be on the east side. We got one light wiggle, probably a half a mile below Blake Flower Plantation. And about the optimum side, it, the compass goes 100 and it does 180. So we cruised around it a few times. And then... Uh, Went back to Vicksburg to get a quarter-inch reinforced rod so we could probe. And we went, we marked the place on the bank. He came back and thrust the iron reinforced rod down. And, it, and about 20 feet below the surface of the water, it hit something of iron. 
and the iron sloped. We thought at first it was the side of the vessel, but it was the sides of the casement uh, because it would hit it and then you could hit, hit, feel it uh, running against metal. So we then went and got in touch with the Corps of Engineers and they let us have a work boat with a crew with a fathometer. And they went up there and they were able to trace the balls. One fellow finally went down with a heart of steel and found a bolt down there. So we came back in 1960. Grabo had left the town and we came back with two scuba divers, Parks and Hart. We got a World War II pumping unit from the Jackson Fire Department, Park uh, Hart being a fireman, and they dove on the vessel for three weeks. And they went down there with pumps and jutted away the mud. So we have uh, the top of the pilot house above the mud, but still under about 10 feet of water. And we have a lucky break. The mayor of Vicksburg, this is 1960, they're cranking up for the Civil War centennial. And Johnny Holland had dreams of being a much bigger man than being mayor of Vicksburg. He never made it any higher. Uh, mayor was his highest political office. And he was elected chairman of the Mississippi Commission on the War between the states. So we decided to try and remove the pilot house that day. So we went to, uh, uh, we, uh, went to Anderson and Tully. Now Bart Tully owed me a favor. So he owns the largest lumber company in the area, Anderson and Tully. And he let us have our work barge in his boat for, for 24 hours. So we went up there and raised the pilot house. And from there, the project takes off. And we finally raised the vessel in two years of hard work, in which Dr. Johnson gets killed, as you probably heard. By the 12th day of December, 1964, the vessel's been on the bottom 102 years. We have her up. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.